David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about statics, CE2301. Specifically, our recent exam number four, where we had um, a fluid pressure problem on page one and a Moore circle problem on page four. I want to real quickly go through the solution to these. Neither one is very difficult. We had a, a dam, uh, in this case, holding back water and the dimensions were as shown and its uh, specific gravity or the density of it was 62.4 pounds per cubic foot of the fluid and here's the dam shown in black of these dimensions and it was kind of a tricky way to get you to use a little geometry and figure out that point A and where it was and we're counting on similar triangles, um, which I've drawn a little piece of over here, the bottom part of it. If it's 30 feet there and 60 feet there, that means that part's 30 feet. 15 feet height means the part, the point from the bottom to point A is seven and a half feet. So I can do the square to the sum of the squares to get that the length from A to B is 30.92 feet. And point A is seven and a half feet deep. Therefore it's pretty easy the pressure at point A is the depth times the density which is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot works out to be the pressure at A is 468 pounds per square foot. Similarly at point B the bottom of the slope it's the depth 15 times 62.4 936 pounds per cubic foot per square foot I wrote cubic foot okay the third part was to tell the resultant of the pressure acting on the sloping surface A to B and the pressure diagram looks just like this remember that the pressure is going to always act normal perpendicular to the surface of whatever rigid surface it's pressing up against and so the pressure at A is 468 PSF from parts 1 and 2, 936 at B. We just draw a little pressure distribution uh, diagram here. What we have is a triangle and a rectangle. And I just figure out for the triangle part, the height is 468, one half because it's a triangle. And its length or its base is 30.92 feet, 72 inches. 735 pounds and its centroid is at two-thirds from its tip so it's and that's the point on question four we wanted to know from point A two-thirds of 30.92 feet is 20.61 feet the rectangle part of this pressure distribution is the area of that which is the magnitude 468 pounds per square foot times 30.92 feet it's 14,470 pounds acting in the center of that rectangle which is one half of 30.92 feet from point A 15.46 to get the total result and I just add those two numbers up 21,700 pounds at just divide these X bar distance X tilde distances times the force sum them up 7235 times 20.61 plus 14470 times 15.46 add those two numbers divide them by the resultant force 21.7 and I get it 17.18 feet from A that's how I report my answer to three significant digits 17.2 feet from A okay the last page was a more circle problem well, we gave you the values of Ix, Iy, and the product of inertia, Ixy, and we asked you to plot those on more circle. We didn't have the circle drawn in yet. I did that because I wanted to have a nice, pretty circle for y'all. So I plot, remember, I plot Ix, Ix, and Iy are plotted on the horizontal scale. Iy, the product of inertia, or Iuv, is plotted on the vertical scale positive up positive to the right so I want to plot IX and IXY together and so that's 2200 
don't know if y'all can read my scale, but that's going to be about 2200 is about here on the horizontal scale. Negative 600 is about here on the vertical scale. And so that is 2200, negative 600. And that is IX and IXY. Similarly, I want to plot IY with the opposite sign of IXY. So that's going to be 600 and 600. It's about right here, 600 on the vertical scale and the horizontal scale is about right there. That is... 600 and 600. Now I just draw a straight line connecting those two. This would be before I've drawn my circle. And now I like to figure where my center is. My center is really the average of those two, IX and IY. 2200 plus 600 divided by 2 it's 2800 divided by 2 is equal to 400, 1400. So my center is at 1400 and 0 on the xy on the vertical scale. And now I know some things about the geometry of this. Specifically, I can say that that distance right there from the center on the horizontal scale is 1400 minus 2200 or 800, so that distance is 800. This vertical distance on my triangle is IXY 600 or negative 600. So I want this radius right here. It's just the square root of the sum of the squares. So that's the square root of 800 squared, which is the difference between IX and the center plus 600 squared, which is IXY. Square root of that is, of course, 1,000. So that's the answer to, I think, the first answer question. Now I want to know my maximum principal moment of inertia, I max. It's real easy on Moore's circle. It's just the center plus the radius. So my center is starting out at 1400, and I want to add the radius, which is 1000, and I get 2400 inch, inches to the fourth. You can see that on more circle, starting off at 1400, adding the radius, that is I max right there. 2400. Note that at my maximum, and my minimum's over here, it wasn't asked for it, but it's just the center minus the radius. Center of 1400 minus 1000 makes my I minimum 400, in case you wanted to know. And finally, I want to know the orientation of the principal axes of inertia, theta p. Okay, on Moore's circle, that theta p is actually doubled. And it's really this angle right here from my IX, IY line to the uh, principal, the uh, horizontal axis, which is where I'm getting I max. And so I know those same dimensions. I know that this length is 600, this length is 800. I know that so I can figure out that triangle right there. So 2 theta P which is what that angle is, is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite 600 over the adjacent 800. So that works out to be 73, no, I'm sorry, 36.9 degrees. Therefore, theta p is half of that one half of 36.9 is 18.4 degrees and that's the answer to the third part of that page